There's Biggie right there. Howdy. It's a, you know, let me tell you a mistake I made yesterday. This is radio now. This is radio. All right, let's get real about it. Biggie has witnessed it. Is this something that uh, if you're inside the industry, you'll appreciate even more? I think so. I think you will. Uh, I make mistakes, okay? When I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong. Sometimes. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> You know, Sometimes. if you were to stop random coworkers and say, describe Kelly in three words, yeah. I mean, own his mistakes is always number one. Yeah. Sometimes you'll fight to the death for him, though, which is always my favorite part of your, that's your right. character. I sure will. <laughs> you'll never give up. Uh, that's right, because I was taught never give up. But then after reflecting... You think, okay, that was bad. I went too far. <laughs> I went too far on that. And this happened in the last 24 hours. Yeah, but really, it's, I mean, it is a mistake that I make. When I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong. Okay, what's today's date? September 8th. Okay. Tomorrow, and I did not know this, this is, tomorrow is National Cancer Awareness Day. And I did not know that. But I work with a client, which I really like, and I had the service, Craft Body Scan. You know, remember I went for the body yeah. scan? Oh, yes. My wife and I went in for a body scan six months or so ago, a little more than that. And what they do is they can do a heart and lung scan or a full body. And it's just basically you go in, it's like an MRI and that you go into a, uh, you're laying down and they do a basic x-ray of your whole body. And they say, okay, you don't have any symptoms, but we see a nodule here that could lead to something. Go see your doctor. You know, that's, that's what it yeah. tells you. We were lucky, you know, mine, mine showed one little, a gallstone. I have one gallstone, mm. and they said, do nothing about it unless it starts to bother you, you're okay. And so, you know, that was it. And my wife was clean as a whistle. So uh, this week, tomorrow, is a National Cancer Awareness Day. And they, of course, that's the kind of thing they screen for. So, I don't know, two weeks ago, they uh, asked me to do a commercial for it that runs on some of our stations. And uh, they had someone who was a cancer survivor. His name's David. He's a cancer survivor, and he was telling his story, and he said, without that scan, I never would have survived. You know, I, I caught it early, thanks to the scan. So what I was supposed to do was do the commercial and put in audio of David saying... So, inter so as a listener, I would hear you, and then an actual real-life testimony. That's right. I would say, you know, my wife and I did this body scan from Crafts Body Scan. We liked it, but listen to David, who is just... Even more incredible. Even more impressive. Yeah. So the first time we did it, I went long. I went what do you long. mean long? I, it's supposed to be 60 seconds. Oh, uh, oh I see. The uh, endorsement itself. Sometimes I get what they call diarrhea of the mouth. Okay? <laughs> They've told me that before. Mm -hmm. Disc jockey jaw jacking. And so I'll say too much. You know how. You know that. Oh, yeah. Oh. You added our pieces here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of chopping. <laughs> you know how you do it. You get in yeah. there, you excise. Mm -hmm. My well, favorite is uh, when you tell me things like, take this 20-minute segment and make it eight minutes, but don't lose the funny. <laughs> and be sure to cut Dave. Yeah. That's always in every email. Edit Dave out here. <laughs> Dave said something. Mm -hmm. Cut that out. I hope... This is, again, this is a very inside segment. Yeah, I hope actually Dave never hears any of these segments. <laughs> He'll probably go, I'm pretty sure I said something there. Was but, I on that show that yeah, day? Was I absent? <laughs> yeah. Was I, was, did, did, did I? Was I sick? Was I sick? What happened? I don't remember feeling sick. That might be. I always say to Biggie, edit out Dave. Mm -hmm. That's what I say to him. And Biggie's, you're like a surgeon yourself. Mm -hmm. You go in there and take a little something out here and there. Okay, I went long. All right. Can I ask by how much? Three seconds. And I thought, All okay, right, it'll work. It's not bad though in our business. They came mm. back to it. Okay. It's not professional. It's not, no, yeah. it's not. And but I thought I'm so good on this. I need. <laughs> they'll give you a grace. I need that experience. Give me three. I need that grace exactly. So now, what are we now? Okay, we're two or three days into the month. Now the the thing starts September 9th is National Cancer Awareness Day. Well, now they get back to me on like the third, and they say, mm, "You long. You you too, cut some of your part out. You know, you have to redo it and cut it out." So, redid it. Oh, got it right at exactly a minute. Okay, perfect. Got it back to them. Well, a couple of days later, they were like, you flubbed the line in here. You meant to say something. I forget even what it was, Ooh. but you know, I was supposed to say something. I said it wrong. And so now, well, that was like, it's Labor Day weekend. So, uh, I wasn't coming back in to recut. You know, I was yeah. like, I'm not driving in. I'll see you Tuesday. <laughs> 
still in our business, right. that's plenty of time. That's right. That's okay. plenty of time. But now we're getting, yeah, we're getting down to now. I'm going to get it to them on the sixth, and National Cancer Awareness Day is the ninth. Okay, so okay, so all right, I redo, and this this is embarrassing now. So I got it to them. Now it's the eighth, and they come back, and apparently the guy who has survived cancer, his name is David, but all through the entire commercial, I called him Josh. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't well, know why. I don't and know. I've been privy to these emails. Yeah, yeah. And at first they were kind of friendly, like, hey, you went a little long. Yeah, yeah. But now the emails are just like, who is Josh? <laughs> why so, did you say Josh? Does he even know how to read? <laughs> the guy's name is David. Where did you get Josh? And he says at the beginning, my name is David. I'm a survivor. <laughs> I mean, all oh, this mm. point, he went like two minutes long. I had to cut him. I cut him. That's I like, Josh, cut him. cancer survivor. <laughs> Hero. I did. I said, all, I said all of that. So they came back and yesterday and said, who's Josh? Josh? Why'd you call him Josh? Well, now the, they can only air the commercial for one day. I mean, it's it, today's the day before yeah. National Cancer. And they don't have it. No, they don't have it yet. I have to redo no. it. So I wrote They them, can't run that. No, of course not. But I wrote them back and said, can you ask David to be Josh? <laughs> <laughs> Where's that was, the harm? That was my whole point. It's like, you know... Nobody really knows David's name is David. <laughs> the only one who's going to be hurt here is David. <laughs> well, and his family probably. Yeah. His family and friends. So they've said, no, we don't cut corners here. You're going to have to redo the commercial. So I'm going to redo it today. Make it right. Yeah. Make it right, of course. But they'll only have one day to air it. Do That's you, the thing. Do you have any clue at all? Where you got Josh from? I think it's because that's your name. <laughs> <laughs> Were you seething about me or something? I think You're I was. Secretly hoping Biggie gets the cake. <laughs> <laughs> no. Were you seething I mean, at something I had done that day? A treatable like, form, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stab Biggie Josh. Yeah. So like hard. testicular. You know. I mean. It can be very serious, but many, many, many men yeah. are treated for it and live <laughs> long, healthy lives. I hope they take Josh's balls. <laughs> Slice one of his balls like he sliced three seconds off my commercial. That's right. It was Biggie Josh who fought to get rid of that three seconds. Yes. I said, leave the three. He's, in fact, before I sent it out, Biggie said, mm, a little bit long by three. I said, leave it. I was too good. I was too good. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you want to tell uh, Da Vinci? Thank that you. the Mona Lisa Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right. a little too big. I can't, you can't edit perfection. You cannot cage a bird. Mm -hmm. I say that all the time about yeah. myself. You, how can you cage me? You know, I'm mm -hmm. just not going to be caged. And Biggie said it's long. And Biggie pointed out, as did the folks from Craft Body Scan, they were like, you know, there's a lot of you and not as much of the cancer survivor. Maybe more cancer survivor and less you. I was hurt. I was what? Oh, Who, yeah. Who's the pro here? Well, the initial was just him going, hi, I'm David. <laughs> That's David. <laughs> survivor. Survivor. Hero. That's right. But in the, now today, I got to redo, you know, uh. and, uh, that's embarrassing. I'm a pro. I mean, yeah. I'm a pro, yeah. and that's uh, an embarrassment. Because now we're right up against it. I'm sure they wanted to air it the whole eight or nine days. Yeah. Here, you know, and then look what's happening. Yeah. It's just it's going away. Uh, I have another one, though, for heart health. And uh, I don't remember her name, but she also <laughs> <laughs> survived. Oh, you know, so I, I think it's a great thing. Let's meet Melinda. <laughs> Her name is Susan. <laughs> Where are you getting these names from? I have real. That's it's. I did it in air. I did it, and it's funny because I just saw this biggie, and I want you to comment on this. It's the ten worst traits you can have as a coworker or boss. I want you to see if I have any of them. Okay. Of course, will I keep a mental scorecard? Keep a mental scorecard. All right. The worst thing you can do as a a mentor, a coworker, or boss. Be unapproachable. Oh, definitely you. <laughs> I think you don't even we've we've chronicled this. You don't even turn around when somebody comes into your office to say hello. No, that's true. That's literally one hundred percent unapproachable. I think it was earlier this week where I was described as unapproachable. Well, my neighbors describe you as that. That's right. They're was, they're, they're pickleball mm -hmm. newbies, mm -hmm. and they I think were playing at near where you were and that's your right. partner that that's day. Right. And they had, of course, my, my neighbors are out having fun, mm -hmm. just playing the sport that's the fastest growing sport. And yeah. they saw you and they were going to say, hey, but they said, he seems unapproachable. And I said, he is. 
<laughs> You're exactly right. Worst thing you can be is unapproachable. I uh, give off that air of I'm unapproachable. Do you know, last night I played a couple of guys that I play with that I, they're great players and uh, played with them this past Sunday. And my partner Diesel and I, we got the better of them this past Sunday by a little. It was very, very close, but we won as many or more than they did for the first time ever. So we were so proud. When we were done, we were like high-fiving in the parking lot and spraying mm-hmm. water and stuff. <laughs> just, you know, just, oh, my God, this was Sunday. Just being guys. Just being guys, <laughs> just spraying water. A little grab ass. <laughs> yeah. You know my boy Kepco that I've talked about before. He, I've yeah. heard of him, yeah. He's one of them. And then another guy named John, a great player. They really are. And so uh, I called him back. I was like, why don't we meet out this week and play a little more? Run it back? Yeah, run it back. And uh, they beat us so badly. I was in the fetal position at the end, just laying there. Yeah. And Kepco with said, your stinky, squishy mm-hmm. shoes, with the stinky sh- with the stink shoe. And Kepco said that after we got the better of them on Sunday, he texted John and said, "We're never letting that happen yeah. again." Oh, These, and never uh, again. Text. Never again. <laughs> and uh, they came a little more edge last <laughs> night. And. Uh, they beat us so badly that I just felt like I had been run over. You were home before Final Jeopardy. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. There was all, all that was left of it was a big sweat stain right on the back of the court. And uh, when all was done, boy, there was no water spray in, in the park. No grab ass in nope. the parking lot this time. Yeah. Those guys even said, guess you guys will keep your water in your bottles this time around, <laughs> won't you? They had everything. They beat us so badly. And I said, I won't call you again. This is, mm-hmm. you've... Uh, I'm like, you know, I hope you enjoyed this moment. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like it's like touching a stove. You know, they just they just absolutely crushed me. Second worst thing you can do as a, a mentor, a coworker, or a boss: be passive aggressive. Biggie, would you describe me as passive aggressive? Absolutely. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah, you were that before you even got in this business. Oh, always have been. Always have been. Mm -hmm. Uh, When things go wrong, you blame others. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Didn't you you just blame a cancer survivor for having the wrong name? (laughs) I really thought he was a Josh. He really looks like a Josh. Does it matter? He looks like a Josh to me. And then I said, does it matter? Who cares about his story? (laughs) Doug, Dave, Josh, whatever. It's all the same. <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> and I said, can you just go with Josh? I mean, he's just, you know, can you just call him can Josh? Can not tell him <laughs> that he's Josh? He's going to hear it. No, no, no. We're, do- we're redoing. We're redoing that. Exactly. Uh, take credit for others' work as a coworker. I can't tell you how many times. I've been in that uh, promotions meeting that we have once a week, and I will have said to Kristen, ah, they want to do some kind of contest for a motorcycle giveaway. Mm -hmm. And Kristen will go, okay, like Harley Ween? And I'll just file that away, and I'll go up there, and I'll say, how about Harley Ween? And everybody goes, oh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Thank you. (laughs) Finally. We struggled for days. (laughs) Finally, somebody says it. (laughs) We've got it now. And, I, and they'll say, Chris Kelly to the rescue again. And I say, mm. that's what I do. <laughs> what, what can I say? Mm-hmm. That's what I do. They don't listen to you. When you have real deep-seated <laughs> concerns, they don't listen to you. Especially check when something's going check. wrong. <laughs> they, don't, they don't care about your personal life. They don't care yeah. if something's going wrong in your personal life. I'll never forget your predecessor, Goat Boy, was on this program. And his girlfriend was gone for like a month. You know, she was doing like some sort of travel abroad. Thing. That's right. That's right. And he came to me and said, I am so down right now. And I said, geez, goat, we'll just go home and, you know, jerk it and be done with it. And he's like, what are you talking what? about? <laughs> <laughs> it was completely inappropriate. You talk about inappropriate. Yeah. I said, we'll just go home and, you know, rub one out and be mm-hmm. done. And he's like, that's not even what I'm talking about. I have deep personal. You, that's a <laughs> violation. A monster. How can you say something like that? <laughs> even in the 1950s mm-hmm. world of advertising, Mad Men style, yeah. that would have been over the line. Worst yeah. possible. Worst. You'd have been called in for that. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And nobody got called in for anything. Then. No. Yeah. No. I think that's really when Goat Boy started quiet quitting. I think he was the first to do the quiet quit. I just read that now 
What, do we have that term, quiet quitting? It's oh, where yeah. you really just don't you just do, do the minimum. The, the bare minimum. You get by. And I read today that we heard that term about three weeks ago. And now I've heard that about 60% of people said, yeah, that's all I do. <laughs> I, just, I just exist mm-hmm. at work. I'm just going to do the bare minimum. If somebody says, can you come in on Saturday? You make up something to do. Nope. If uh, you if, Can you stay extra? No. Yes. I can't. Sorry. Can't make it. And now more than half said, yeah, I'm just, I'm quiet quitting at work right now right now the other thing is uh, this is the bad thing worst things a boss or a co-worker you do you don't encourage those around you to do their best mm. you don't encourage them you never want them to get out of their position and rise up <laughs> oh yeah no that's <laughs> very true i never mm-hmm. want to see anybody go further hit the ceiling no. you really should do mm-hmm. that you know we had an e- email uh, every, I think everyone on the program received an email maybe last week, first week of school back open. A young mm-hmm. man mm-hmm. who said he'd been listening to this program <laughs> since childhood Yes, said, uh, I've been assigned a project at school, mm-hmm. and they want you to interview someone in a field that you find interesting. Yes. And he sent it to everybody. He said, well, can I have speak with some of you don't have to do it in person we can mm-hmm. do, do it via zoom mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i said to kelly yesterday morning big mm-hmm. and i said uh, have you responded to this young man yet and he said what <laughs> and i give the young man's name no I give the young man's email <laughs> nope i deleted it <laughs> well i just thought talk it was, about a mentorship i thought it was spam i didn't he was like he poured his heart out i yeah. thought it was just some sort of I love your show i just know. want to talk radio uh, like, somebody get drew the spam filter's not working <laughs> <laughs> want this guy out of my email. Be in my inbox i couldn't believe it i was shocked there's another radio personality uh giving another black eye to our industry i've listened to him a few times and watched him he fills in for colin cowherd on tv sometimes does a show himself, I think, in New York. His name's Doug Gottlieb. Full disclosure. Oh, yeah. Never a huge fan of his. Played He's been ba- around for a while, though. Yes. Oh, Played yeah, basketball at uh, Oklahoma State and probably some NBA. And then did some sports shows. You know what he's maybe most famous for? And I actually heard an interesting anecdote that he told one time. He was on CBS for March Madness coverage. This is probably 10 or 12 years ago. And he was sitting there with Greg Gumbel... Charles Barkley, Kenny Smith, and one other guy, I can't recall. Clark Kellogg? Might have been Clark Kellogg. Okay. And he comes on and says, yeah, I guess I'm the token white guy here. And nobody laughed. Remember that? They all I looked, do. They all looked at mm-hmm. him like, what? Yeah. He tried to ride it out, too. Yeah, like, he did. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Huh? <laughs> You yeah, know, white guy. You know, and then I, I, when he filled in one time for Cowherd, he told the story about that. And he said, you know what happened there? Uh, and he, he was like, uh, I was um, doing my own radio show, and they called me last minute and said, you need, we need you to fill in for somebody else on uh, the, in the CBS NCAA show. And he said, okay. So he runs into a friend of his as he's leaving his own radio show on the way to the studio, and he goes, I'm in a hurry. i got to fill in. I'm going over to CBS. And the guy goes, who are you working with? And he named them all. And his friend goes, oh, you're like the token white guy. And they all laughed. You know, He and his friend laughed. So he led the show with that. <laughs> And nobody laughed. You're the Sweet 16. <laughs> Awkward transition. But he said, I thought it was going to be so, I just meant to be lighthearted. One guy, a barker, somebody said, I didn't hear you. I didn't know. And mm-hmm. so they just sat there and looked at him. And mm-hmm. he said, and, you know, within 15 minutes, because Twitter was out yeah. and fairly new. And he's like, within 15 minutes, I was like, oh, my God, my whole career is over. I just got <laughs> Yeah, he got WTF. Me. Right, exactly. So, um, we were. Do we have it? We may have that. We, we have. We, we actually have, have that. Yeah, we have a. It's a the odd thirty second exchange. The the thirty second exchange between the two of them, and or the four of them, I guess. So he does it. He makes a bad joke and then tried to defend the joke, I guess, later. But this is actually when that happened. Doug Gottlieb did this. Look at this murderer's row. Greg Anthony, Doug Gottlieb, Kenny the Jet Smith, Sir Charles Barkley. Welcome back to New York, guys, and. Um, it's going to be a good night. Cream rising to the crop. I don't know why you guys asked me. I'm just here to bring diversity to this set here. Give the kind of white man's perspective on things. Okay. Point guard position. No, no. <laughs> okay, just checking. <laughs> it's Marquette, Miami. How about you guys? No, I'm just uh, checking, man. I'm just checking. You, uh, you, you jump right into it. You're swimming hard. Okay. Swimming hard. I'm, <laughs> upstream, I'm out of Trust me, we'll get you back before the end of the night. Right? Mm. It landed with a thud. I mm. like Kenny Smith. Uh, it's swimming hard. Swimming hard. <laughs> Miami Marquette. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Let's just move on. Got to get right into it. Well, now that same guy, Doug Gottlieb, apparently 
tweeted way back when, uh, this is a few months ago, Freddie Freeman left the Braves, a big star for the Braves, they won the World Series, went to the Dodgers. And the report is that he always wanted to stay a Brave, and he told his agent, make me a Brave, keep me as a member of the Braves. Well, he wound up moving to the Dodgers, and Gottlieb said that his agent, Casey Close, never told Freddie Freeman about the Braves' final offer. He wanted to move him to L.A. It was a giant Huge story. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, yeah, dominated the news for a week. And, and when... Uh, Freddie Freeman played in Atlanta for the first time back. He cried, mm-hmm, you know, and, mm-hmm. and even the Dodger players were like, hey, man, you're a member of our team now. And Freddie Freeman, it was clear he wanted to stay a Brave. And his agent, according to Gottlieb, never told him of the Braves' final offer and sort of hoodwinked him into going to the Dodgers. Bombshell story. Huge. Well, now Gottlieb admits that was misinformation. Oh. That, that. <laughs> Gottlieb. He got that, he got that uh, from sources that he did not vet. And it wound up being a lie, and uh. he reported it as fact. And there's a lawsuit now from the agent <laughs> saying, "You've ruined my reputation by saying that I never yeah, gave I never my client. About that. I didn't give my client full disclosure, and now other client potential clients are avoiding me because of the way exactly." I and you know, I think it all stemmed from because Freddie Freeman actually fired his agent. Mm-hmm. And yes, then Gottlieb he did. came out and said, "Well, here's why he never yeah. told him that's right about the Atlanta uh, deal." Uh. That's right. Which is total fabrication. Gottlieb says, I should have vetted my sources. I went with it without knowing. And I've apologized in person to Casey Close. I the call, agent? The agent. I've called him and said, I apologize. Yeah, but somebody gets a reputation. That's it's right. It's hard to get your business back That's sometimes. Right. He says, I've been in touch with Casey to apologize directly. I've deleted my original tweet. But that was six <laughs> months ago. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so what? That doesn't matter. That's dinosaur bones Deleted now. your original. In the Twitter world. Who cares, right? It was a huge story. I didn't know that Gottlieb was the one that broke it, but that was enormous news mm-hmm. when he went, I mean, in the sports world, in the baseball yeah. world, when he went off from Atlanta to Los Angeles. That's pretty bad to do that. Isn't yeah. It? To go off. Not off. professional. And I'm a guy who goes off half-cocked. Yes. You know, I went off half-cocked yesterday, late in this program, about... Uh, Jewel, the uh, folks who make um, not the 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 folk singer, the no, pop singer, the, the the vaping device, the vapor, and uh, went off half cocked. Was one of the few to defend Jewel mm-hmm. uh, against lawsuits and so forth. And people came to me later and said, "You yeah, know, you don't know the information on that story." Mm-hmm. That's a Gottlieb. Yeah, you were very wrong. They yeah. call it a Gottlieb. Eddie, you're talking about uh, Doug Gottlieb, who now has admitted he's wrong about this baseball story. Go ahead. You were talking about Doug Gottlieb misstep. Mm-hmm. Well, well, he started out at Notre Dame, and he got kicked out of the school because he stole his roommate credit card and charged up a bunch of stuff. Yeah, good uh, lord. Similar situation that Chris Kelly encountered, I believe. All right. Yeah. Well, the the roommate stole true, from me. But yeah, that's you right. Were the victim. In I that was case. the victim in that case. That's right. Let's not spread misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> that Kelly cool. stole his roommate. <laughs> no his credit card. No, <laughs> mm-hmm. that happened to me. That's right. I've heard him tell that story. I'll tell you what, this Gottlieb, man, that's three times now. One of them is kind of an innocent joke by act, you know. Yeah. And that didn't Everybody cost makes him. a bad joke. Right. Well, believe you me, I have. But for that, for this thing here about Freddie Freeman and the charging, that's right, he was at Notre Dame. I'd forgotten uh, that. I wonder that's what Gottlieb told his roommate, because what does your roommate tell you? I'm working for the FBI. He did say that. <laughs> he was working for the FBI. Or the when st- he started to catch on to. That's right. He did. He told, he told me that he was working for the. State Bureau of Investigation, and that he couldn't show me any documents. It was like for, he had documents on his desk that said "Your Eyes Only" and stuff like that. Well, it turned out he had no job at all, mm. and you know he was just. Did stealing. he fake a badge, Kelly? Your roommate? He did have a badge. Yes, he faked a badge. Flip his wallet open real quickly and then close <laughs> it right there. Hey, that says Tweetsy. <laughs> <laughs>